Hello and welcome back to Let's Code Physics. Um, last time we were successfully able to implement a 3D projectile motion as we continue to kick soccer balls at a soccer goal. And so we were able to not just launch it at an angle, but also have various approach angles, sending it off in different directions. Um, and so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to implement that 3D uh, a double angle spherical coordinate system into our football code. So I've saved our football code um, over here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take everything that I added last time and copy it over and copy and paste it over into here because I think this will offer a little bit more um, interesting 3D stuff to look at rather than our soccer goal. Um, so the first thing I need to do is to uh, set up the approach angle. So let's add that in here right before landing Y. There we go. Um, so that uh, creates the second variable, so the second angle. So again, this first angle, this is the angle that is made from the X axis going up toward the Y axis. The second angle is the angle made going from the X axis over in the Z direction. So this is sort of this is this is the angle on the ground. This is the angle off the ground. Is another way of thinking about it. All right, and uh, let's see. I need to see. I've got everything matching up in this view. So let's scroll down a little bit. Oops. <clears throat> see, my projectile speeds are different because my kicking speeds are a little bit different between the two games, and that's fine. Um, and now I need to add in the. Uh, projectile.angle2 declaration here. There we go. Okay, we're matching again. Um, let's see. Oh, I have a, I, I do have my um, angle and speed label here. I suppose I should add in an angle2 label. So why don't we do that? Copy, paste, and of course I'll need to go back up to the top to um, declare this angle two underscore label, but I'll do that in just a minute. Um, all right, so let's scroll down here, and then I need to update my projectile.velocity initialization. So let's just copy that whole thing, and then come over here, select this whole thing, and paste that whole thing. Okay, cool, so we're matching up uh, between these two. Um, I don't know why I didn't put the angle and speed labels in the soccer code. Uh, I just uh, I forgot to copy them over and the rest I think is fine because everything else is already set up in terms of three-dimensional vectors so checking for the uh, um, you know for the collisions is set up as three-dimensional vectors um, adding the the or updating the velocity and the position is already set up as 3d vectors uh, the only thing I have not done is add a ruler in the Z direction. Um, I will add that off camera um, just because I, I don't. We've already got the the, the goalpost as a measure for the Z direction, so I don't know how important that is in today's code. And then, as promised, I need to go back up here and add in a second angle label. Um, I think I can be done with that one there. So let's maximize this one here. Um, <clears throat> So let's see, I need to worry about these things offsets, uh, or their position, I guess I should say. So these are separated by one, and that was okay. So let's make this one a negative two, and this one a negative three. They continue that separation there. So uh, let's, let's see, let's double check that we get the same results to make sure we didn't break it. You always wanna make sure you didn't break the code before you do something new with it. So if I set angle two at zero, then I should get the same type of results that I had before. The last time we were angle two underscore label not defined. Oh, it would help if I actually change the name. There we go. So with angle two um, being set at zero, I should get the same results as before because it should just be kicking along the x-axis. And lo and behold, it is. Uh, always glad to see a code working after you make changes to it. Um, and of course, we still have our invisible wall Oops, just behind the goal post um, to keep our footballs from flying too far off into the end zone there. Uh, excuse me, not into the end zone. This is the end zone. Into the stands. The end zone section of the stands. That's what I was thinking of. Um, 
So what I would do now is I would start to play around with that angle two and see what that does for us. So for example, I might change this to, um, let's say two degrees. <clears throat> it's anything like the soccer one. We have a couple of degrees in which to play. Uh, yeah, so here we're going two degrees off to the right from this view or, or out of the screen from the original view. And we're making it a little bit less than halfway to the goalpost. So we've probably got about, uh, say, five degrees in which to, to have an error there would be my guesstimate. Um, but what I'd like to do, instead of doing that manually, um, I'd like to get the computer to test that for us. So what we're going to do now is we're going to set up a second loop. So we, we loop over the initial angle, and I guess I should call that the launch angle now. Initial launch angle measured in degrees. Let's set up another loop where we loop over the approach angle, and then we'll get uh, some nice results in 3D. We'll be able to fill in that rectangle that the goalpost makes to get an idea of what our um, angle variation can be. <coughs> so I just need to set up the same type of thing that I have here. So I can set this, um, let's go with, so this thing can go positive and negative without a problem. That just means going to one side of the goalpost and then to the other. Why don't we go from negative 10 to 10? So I have initial approach angle measured in degrees. I would love if I could think in terms of radians and not have to convert, but I, I don't see that happening. My, we, we, you know, no matter how much I, I can try to venture off into metric units, um, switching over to degrees, I think is always going to be an issue unless I'm thinking in terms of, you know, sections of a circle, but you know, to convert uh, a small amount of degrees into a radian I, is, is, is not how my brain is wired, I don't think. Um, and let's go all the way over to, oops, positive, not positive 100, positive 10. There we go. <clears throat> and so now all I need to do is recreate the type of loop I have for angle with angle two. So I can have while angle two is less than or equal to max angle the second. Um, and then we have our projectile information. Now I will need to re-indent all of this. Um, I suppose I should go ahead and do that. Um, let's see, so we've got angle two. We originally had it defined out here, so it's just referencing it here, so that's fine. Um, so let's get all the way down here, all the way down until we increment the first angle. So I'm gonna do control and then uh, a close square brace and that indents everybody by one. So I could have also done that here, but that's the control squ uh, close square brace. Pretty nice little hop key there. And so what I need to do at the end of that inner loop, I need to go back out. Can you go back out one more? Um, what is that? Oh yeah, that's that's still, okay. So this is all still under um, the, uh, the time loop. So I need to make sure that I, I just need to make sure that I'm in column eight for my angle increment. Lo and behold, that's where I am, wonderful. So now I just do angle two plus equals delta angle two. I did set up a second delta angle, right? All right, delta angle for the second angle. Yes, I set that up to be one because uh, I have a feel for what these are gonna be. These I'm gonna leave like this until we get a better idea. So. This is gonna cause the code to run for longer because we're now um, uh, uh, increasing the number of, of possible scenarios to run. So I'm gonna increase the frame rate down here. Let's take it from 150, let's take it to 500. If that's too fast for, for viewing pleasure, then we can always decrease it. All right, cool. So we've got these things firing off and that was originally not hitting the wall. So I guess I need to make my wall a little bit wider. Um, what's cool about this though, is that, uh, uh, so, so it's, 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 you can see it looping over the, the approach angle first, and then it'll loop over the, uh, the launch angle, or at least it should be. What is, uh, is that thing still sailing out there? Why am I not? Let's see, I went up my angle two. My launch angle doesn't seem to have changed any. 
<clears throat> well, that should be going up to a max of 40. All right, so we've got while angle less than or equal to max angle. Angle two less than or equal, while angle two less than or equal to max angle two, yeah. So it should be repeating this outer while. Oh, 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 I never reset. Um, I need to reset the, the angle two, don't I? It just did a whole bunch of stuff at, um, it, it just did a whole bunch of, of, of useless loops at the max angle two. So let's set a min angle two. I forgot I need to reset my second variable here. So we're gonna say angle two equals min angle two. There we go. That should fix that. Oh, I suppose I could have made the um, the square wider while I was at it. Oh, well, I don't think it's gonna matter. Two trailer much, the rectangle, excuse me, the box. <clears throat> okay, so now we're restarting over here. So now we are looping up along the launch angle uh, very slowly. We have to increment all the way along the, the approach angle before we get to the launch angle. So this is the view if you're sitting in the end zone section of the of the of the stands the crowd the bleachers the whatever and somebody is very meticulously practicing their their field their their extra point attempts this is what you would see uh this these are the footballs that you would see approaching you and some of them would be striking the net some of them would be sailing along here i need to make the, the net longer so this is a pretty cool view um i don't know how much useful information we're going to be able to pull off of this visual because um, it's, uh, it's, it's so crowded. Um, I suppose we can, we can, we can count to see how much of a, how much of an error we get with this thing. Um, so we are pretty much done at this point. So I'm going to hit alt to pause it. Um, because anything higher than this is going to shoot past the, 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 the goalpost, the rectangle that you need to get the ball within. So it looks like we've got about a one, two, three, four, five, uh, let's see, so if I started here, I need to go one, two, three, four, five. It looks like we've got still got about five degrees to work with within the launch angle, regardless of how the, um, regardless of what the approach angle is. So that's good to know that your approach angle is not going to impact your launch angle range all that much. So what we're going to do next time, um, and I'm not sure when that will be because I think after this video, I would like to return to the Druda circuit. That's been very successful, very popular, but I, I've, I've needed to do some off-camera work, and I think I'm ready to uh, to return to that now. So I think we're going to put projectile motion on pause for a little bit, and then uh, start working on the Druda circuit again, try to get some parallel branches. But when we come back to projectile motion, we'll start to add in other forces. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a drag force, because that's hopefully going to make um, this this uh, this scattering pattern here a little bit more interesting than it currently is where it looks the same no matter what your approach angle is because when you when you add in drag the distance suddenly becomes an important factor because then you have more distance over which the projectile can lose some kinetic energy so that'll be interesting to see how that impacts our, uh, our kicking patterns here. So uh, I'll leave you with that. Uh, feel free to download the code from the description below, play around with the distance, play around with the, uh, with the, with the kicking speed and see what kind of different results you get. Um, I will see you next time. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.